Hello and welcome to another video which definitely will get you the top grades because it uses the top grade essays of students who took the exam in 2019. Today's video comes very kindly from Sanjay Saktivel. I hope I pronounced that properly, Sanjay. And he's given me all his essays and he got 158 out of 160 in his literature exam. So we are going to look at his answer about capitalism. We'll see how he plans. We'll also see particularly the quality of vocabulary and sentence structure that he has, because Sanjay is a very good writer indeed. You'll notice that he is not especially neat. And as we go through, that's the first page, that's the second, this is the third. You will notice that he does not write that much. Although the end of his conclusion is probably just missed off because the last line begins with therefore and there must be a further sentence but not to worry. And you will also find out what the examiner's comments at the side mean. So level 5 for assessment objective 2 and assessment objective 3. Then level 6 for assessment objective 3 and assessment objective 2. And then level 6 for assessment objective 1. And what you'll notice is if you only have one uh, level 6 example at AO1, one at AO3, and one at AO2. That is enough to get you the top marks, even if elsewhere in the essay you're only level 5. And then finally, at the end of the essay, I will go over the seven points that make a top grade answer. These come straight from the mark scheme. So these are the only seven things the examiners are looking for. Once you get used to doing those, you get top marks. Now, if you're a student who's already writing at at least grade seven, you don't need to write much of a plan. Now, don't take my word for it because I could be wrong. Uh, so experiment in the mocks or in a practice paper. Now, what I love about Sanjay here is he's written down the time he started the essay, 9.25, and then the time he needs to finish it in order to get on in the exam, 10.10. So he's given himself 45 minutes to write the essay and he knows that writing a plan doesn't get him any marks and stops him actually writing. So what he's got here is an aid memoir. He's decided, well, remind myself I need to write about capitalism, link that to Priestley's purpose. And for God's sake, he said to himself, don't forget to give inter alternative interpretations, not just about language, but also about the form of the play. And I suspect he also means the structure when he says the form. So this is a checklist to himself. Uh, um, he probably stuck to it. Let's find out. In the didactic play An Inspector Calls, Priestley explores selfishness as a quintessential characteristic inherited by capitalists. It is apparent in many characters, and Priestley constructs these flaws to highlight the much-wanted change in the post-World War II audience's innate nature. So he set out quite a clear thesis here as to why Priestley is writing about capitalism, as to why he's including quintessential selfishness as a characteristic of capitalism, and how he wants the audience to change. So as long as he proves that in the essay, he will have a very well-constructed argument. And the well-constructed argument is number one on the examiner's checklist. And number two, conceptualised, means that it is argued all the way through. So that's what we're looking for next. Priestley constructs Mr. Burling to exemplify the devastating effect selfishness has on proletariats. In his... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> In his sophistic speech... He reiterates how he needs cheaper costs and higher prices. This is a clear example of bourgeoisies exploiting their businesses to get an increase in prosperity. The juxtaposition between cheaper and higher corroborates the multifaceted nature that capital ad capitalism advocates, brings a greater income to already wealthy people, but depreciates lower class people like Eva to count pennies. Now what's interesting here is that Sanjay's reaching for a really advanced vocabulary. Um, I've never seen sophistic used in this way before, like a sophist. Um, 
and uh, very good use of the technical term juxtaposition. I love the way that he keeps contrasting his quotations through this. But the examiner, interestingly, is, well, I'm pretty convinced, but I'm only giving it a level five. And I think what the examiner's done here is they've looked at what's obviously thoughtful and developed and said, well, do you know what? I'm just not convinced. Now, there's not a lot you can do about that. But the great thing is, as we saw at the beginning of the video, the examiner's first impression hasn't determined Sanjay's grade. Uh, they've kind of got used to his way of writing with super advanced vocabulary, which he does not always use successfully, and that's semi-counted against him here. Right, let's see what the AO3 context is that the examiner liked. Moreover, Mr. Burling's selfish nature is further exemplified by the character the character, I think that's ism, of his name. Or is it character nim? A word that I don't know. A character nim, I'll look it up. Of his name Arthur, which may give an allusion to King Arthur. Uh, so that is a good bit of context. Um, why isn't that going up to level six? Well, because he then goes on to say that Arthur was known for his Marxist qualities. Um, Marxism was the first form of communism. And I don't think you can argue that a king necessarily was well known for having communist beliefs. Uh, let's see how he sets that up, though. Sanjay says uh, he sat at a round table equidistant from all other people to highlight how he believed that all people are identical when stripped of their wealth. Well, he's managed to pull that off, hasn't he? Well done, Sanjay. He's linked being a king, King Arthur, to his Marxist qualities. However, there is some irony, as in the stage directions it describes how they sat at a dining table with Mr. Burling at the head. And this uh, thus had varying distances from each other. So that's what's really impressed the examiner, this detail about the round table, which readers would have known about, and contrasted to how Burling is sitting at the dining table with distance between himself and the younger members of his family in particular. So this could be synonymous to how Mr. Burling had varying respect for others too. Priestley may have created this archetypal char capitalist character to warn his audience of the results of capitalism so that they too won't succumb to a characteristic viewpoint about society, sorry, chauvinistic viewpoint about society, but strive for a Labour government. So yes, the examiner says level six for context, but also for methods and conceptualised response. So here we are in AO2, and using King Arthur in this way as an illusion is a method that the writer is using. And now, finally, the examiner is convinced that this was convincing. Now, you'll notice that the examiner is waiting to give a mark for AO1, which is really your use of quotations. And we left off up here. And the examiner's not giving any comment at all at this stage until they're convinced about the use of quotation. Now, I tell you that because this is the most important skill in your essay. Once you start weaving your quotations in, you suddenly move up the mark scheme really quickly. So, therefore, Mr. Burling's selfishness is seen to be devastating on the millions of John Smiths and Eva Smiths, as they would be treated unfairly by the upper classes. Moreover, the inspector is used as a proxy to Priestley to foreshadow the negative consequence uh, as well, that should be narcissism, the consequences of narcissism, or I think being narcissistic. The inspector was almost produced from an incantation when Mr. Burling says a man has to mind his own business and look after himself. And Priestley structures the inspector's arrival at this point to portray how proletariats are breaking free from the chains of society. At the end of the play, the inspector leaves with the message, if men do not learn this, uh, 
this do not learn they will be taught in fire blood and anguish so he's not quite got the quotation right but the examiner hasn't minded um the triadic phrase so having three parts of the phrase uh, gives connotations of an eternal and impending doom that capitalism would carry so the examiner has got excited about the interpretations that were in here and they are linked to precise references those quotations i talked about being so important and they're being linked towards a conceptualized argument now the way he's shown a conceptualized argument is by looking at the beginning of the play and comparing it to the end of the play yep so we have that incantation at the beginning compared to his last words now that's important because it shows that sanjay and in this case you understand the journey of the character and the purpose of that journey which is to discredit capitalism however the use of men suggests how it is only males that are told to change as females would have virtually no power due to the patriarchy and so wouldn't be able to change alternatively notice how he keeps putting in different points of view which obviously gets him higher marks for interpretations so alternatively it could be because the business owned by men alternatively it could be because the businesses owned by men were very unjust to workers and exploited them for financial gains therefore this was uh, sorry will welcome the audience's dissociation from upper class traditionalism as they would feel that having capitalistic qualities would lead to eternal damnation uh, so this one's a leap here and sanjay hasn't proven this he hasn't backed it up and he hasn't talked about the christian language which would allow the audience to make this leap towards eternal damnation i know he knows this stuff because that's why he's using the phrase but he hasn't proven it and notice that the examiner's written nothing against this because they really don't know what to do with it but what is going to save him is coming back to that trusty skill of analyzing a quotation as soon as you do that the examiner gets excited and goes oh i can give this an ao1 mark often it leads to other marks as well because when you're writing about a quotation you can also write about the context and get the ao3 or you can talk about the methods and get the ao2 so i can't overemphasize the importance of analyzing quotations throughout your essay and using them in your argument so let's see how Sanjay does. Priestley also highlights how upper class traditionalism is breeding selfish and unlawful citizens. Eric was in the state when a chap easily turns nasty, when he carried out his egregious act, lovely vocabulary, and it avoids having to use the name of it, which YouTube does not like. We are presented with the fact that the state is an archetypal part of being a male of the bourgeoisie and it was regarded as being, I'm not sure what that says. This abhorrency is also seen when an alderman almost ripped Sheila's blouse. Well, that's not quite right. It was Sheila's friend's blouse. This will evoke in the reader a sense of disgust in the upper class so you can see there's a pretty full analysis of this language that's why it's got the level six mark eric's selfishness is further seen when he gave 50 pounds to daisy this would be equivalent to 40 weeks of salary and as they were only together for a very short time we could infer that eric used most of the money for his own pleasures i.e drinking this solipsistic act would result in eva uh, having her hope in society sorry losing her hope in society and consequently committing suicide this shows how despicable utter class teachings can evolve through generations and will eventually get greater 
in magnitude. So even though the examiner has not written anything here, this is a top class analysis of Priestley's purpose. And when you write about the writer's purpose, you're being conceptualized again. You're writing about interpretations and interpretations prop up, uh, crop up again when you're writing about perspectives. So having the writer's ideas helps you hit AO1 and AO3. So this paragraph is going to develop another interpretation about Priestley's point of view. Perhaps Priestley created this genetic line of misogynistic characters to serve as a political di diatribe to evoke an uprising. I think he means to provoke an uprising and it should be against the capitalist government so that a meritocracy could be established is what he should say. To conclude, Priestley presents selfishness as a tool that capitalists like Mr. Burling carry in order to exploit people lower in the patriarchal ladder. Hierarchy would have been better. It is seen to be apparent even in the end of the play when they believe the inspector was a hoax, so still believe they've done nothing wrong. Therefore, something presumably about denying their responsibility which reinforces their selfishness and Priestley does this in order to convey how morally corrupt the capitalist system is uh, as embodied by Gerald, Burling and Mrs Burling. So don't be put off by the language that Sanjay used because remember he got nearly a hundred percent even though he didn't always use that language correctly. And as we saw with the level 5 observation from the examiner here, using that really advanced vocabulary often counts against you rather than for you. Uh, so the examiner wasn't wholly convinced because Sanjay didn't sound completely in control of what he was saying. There were big chunks of his essay that the examiner was silent on. They weren't really sure what to do until Sanjay started quoting and then the examiner was super certain. I'm going to give it great grades. So keep remembering that skill of putting in as many quotations as you can. Hopefully you spotted that by using however and alternatively and perhaps Sanjay was following this part of his plan to have alternative um, interpretations, perspectives and not just about the quotations, the language but also about the structure of the play. And it's worth noticing how many characters he used when he was writing about cap capitalism. So he's talked about Burling, he's talked about the inspector, he's talked about Sheila and Eric, and pretty much left out Gerald. But that doesn't matter. He's used four characters to write about Priestley's purpose with presenting capitalism in this way. It's only three pages long, so we get a strong sense that he has stuck to his time limit, didn't overrun. And let's look at those seven skills. Well, because he kept coming back to Priestley's purpose, that always made sure that his answer was conceptualised. He didn't always have a range of judicious references. Those are the quotations. So you can see how banging those quotations in really gets the examiner excited and moving you up the mark scheme. You can definitely see that there was insightful analysis, but the examiner wasn't certain of that until they had the quotation with it. Uh, so even where there was form and structure, they didn't really commit themselves much until they found a quotation to go with it. Another reason to keep quoting. The subject terminology was used well, even though it was perhaps too advanced and Sanjay didn't always use everything correctly. But that didn't count against him. So what the examiner does is they look at the stuff that you do use correctly. However, they're only human. So don't be using subject terminology you're not certain of. Because I think that will lower your grade. Obviously, it was an exploration because it included more than one interpretation all the way through. Which happened when he kept coming back to Priestley's purpose. So this is really interesting. When you write about Priestley's purpose, you hit number one, a well-structured argument. You hit number two, conceptualized approach. And you hit number three, having more than one perspective, having an exploration, looking at different interpretations. So hopefully you can see 
how relatively easy it is to boost your grade. You might not be able to do all of these at once, but you can definitely do lots of them in your writing, and this will take your grade 4 or 5 essay right up to 6, 7, 8, and even 9. So go back and test yourself on what you've learned. Hopefully you've taken some notes so you won't forget this. Uh, you could even go back and pause the video and just copy the essay out to revise from. I would. Uh, thank you for subscribing. See you soon on my channel.